So for question number 11, this is a multi-part question, so this is going to be a longer video. Um, but taking a look here, I can see that they're talking about uh, cats and dogs in terms of they asked people, do you like dogs? So that's going to be one of the variables that we need to consider. And then the other one is, do you like cats? Now, remember that when you ask a question like this, liking cats, you say, do you like cats? Yes. The important thing to realize is that this 194 and 21 are both saying people liked cats. So there's 215 people that like cats. And then in terms of no, there were 120. So both of these numbers right here, the 215 and the 120, talk about cat uh, preferences. Meanwhile, you get the same thing with these two numbers right here the 31 and the 304 for liking dogs. So just keep that in mind as we go through uh, this entire problem. The only other number of um, that's kind of important for us to draw attention to is this green number right here. That 335 is the total number of people that were involved for the entire survey. So taking a look here, when they say what is the marginal distribution in percent form of liking dogs. Well, that means we need to say, okay, we like dogs. Well, if you like a dog, you should have said yes. So if I come all the way down, I see that that's 304. And there's the cat. Um, so this total right here is going to be 304. So 304 people out of the total group, which was 335. Now, if I convert that into a percentage on my calculator here, 304 divided by 335, that gives me a grand total of 90.7, or you could say close to 91. Um, I'm not really checking on rounding, but 90.7%. So now, I'm taking a look here for the second question, raising my 304 here, and now, uh, let's see. What is the conditional distribution of liking dogs for students who like cats? Now that's huge. Um, so I'm going to highlight this in orange right here. So they want me to look only at these students who like cats. So if I go to people who like cats, those are going to be the people that say yes. So I need to look only at this orange row now because those are the people that like cats. Which of these numbers talks about people that like dogs? Well, if you like a dog, you should have said, yes, I like dogs. So this 194 is the number of people that like dogs. So 194 is the number of people that liked the dogs out of, but now I'm not gonna use the 335 here because it said to look only at people that like cats. So I have to use this 215 right here so taking a look here, 194 divided by 215, I get 90.2. So this is 90.2%. Now it says, what kind of displays would we use to examine the association between liking dogs and liking cats? Uh, just name a graph. Well, the best one is going to be some type of a bar graph in this case. Um, maybe a pie chart could be used also. But um, I tend to prefer bar graphs just because they um, they just seem to be easier to compare. It's hard to compare like the wedge shapes of a pie chart sometimes. Um, and then does, do liking dogs and liking cats appear to be independent give statistical evidence to support your conclusion? Well, we've already done this one idea right here in part B, which was we said, okay, if people like cats, how likely are they to like a dog? And I see 90.2. So what this 90.2% is saying, so 90.2% um, chance of dogs if we know you like well, let's actually look at what happens in the same situation for dogs. So what 
Um, no, actually, that, I don't mean change. I mean chance. Hello. Helps if I actually write down what I say. Okay. So if I look for dogs, I don't have this calculation yet. So let's see here. Let's uh, say in words what I want first. So I want to know what's the chance that someone likes cats if we know they like dogs. Okay, so let's go up to our table and say, we already know that they like dogs. So grabbing my highlighter and highlighting the numbers that that would mean, people that like dogs are gonna be right here in purple. So highlighting just my purple numbers. I wanna know what's the chance that they like cats. Well, again, I see that that's 194. So there's 194 people that say they like cats and dogs. But now the total is going to be out of this 304. So if I come down here, I can say over here it was 194 out of 304. So when I do that calculation, 194 divided by 304, um, I get 63%. Now, general rule, when you do a comparison like this, when there's a difference right here of more than 10%. This is more than 10% difference. Then it probably means that there might be some evidence. So in this case, I would feel comfortable saying that there is some evidence that these two variables, liking dogs and liking cats, have some type of a relationship. Because there's a relationship, they might be independent, they might not be independent. So in this case, I'm going to say that their independence might be a little questionable, but I'm not comfortable saying that they're completely dependent.